Muy buenos días a todos los asistentes del evento. Para los que no me conocen, mi nombre es Andrea Silva, formo parte del staff de LACNIC y les doy la bienvenida a la cancha. I'm welcoming you to the event of LACNIC 36 and LACNOG 2021. It's our second day of the event and in this opportunity in this hybrid format. It's an honor for LACNIC to be able to have your participation both in person in the event and uh, we we will have a public policy forum we are going to see the proposals of the policies as presented by the community as always we invite you to participate in all the dynamics at the event first of all we have the social media you can visit lacanic 36 uh, 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 hashtag lacanic 36 has Tag LACNOC21. Yesterday, Simon won. And uh, well, we also, you can also participate in this shuffle when uh, you share with uh, the uh, uh, hashtag LACNIC36, hashtag LACNOC21. And we have uh, the virtual uh, trade show where you can contact with the sponsors and to download uh, material and request uh, for meetings. And you can see who is attending the, the trade show and uh, participating with them. And then also we also have the Discord chat. We have about 400 participants in Discord. It's a chat where you can also uh, uh, call and uh, there are channels of the tutorials that we had yesterday so we invite you to join the discord chat we're going to leave the link in the chat and finally the social virtual event that will take place tomorrow at 2015 UTC and we're going to present other dynamics throughout the week before we go on with the opening of the event, let me tell you that we have a simultaneous interpretation and transcription in Spanish, English, and Portuguese. We request you something very important, those of us in, those of you who are in Zuma, to uh, mute the original audio in uh, the Zoom interpret interpretation to avoid any interference. Now we're going to do the official opening of the event. We have Minister Omar Paganini, who will speak of the technological change in Uruguay and in the region. But first, we're going to give the floor to Javier Salazar, Vice President of the LACNEC Board, who has come from Mexico to be with us today. Go ahead, Javier. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, dear participants, authorities, and uh, the rest of the members of the community, it's an honor for me to welcome you to a first hybrid event. The pandemic made uh, virtuality very important and uh, it um, became commonplace so we had to adapt uh, all uh, the meetings to this new format but this opportunity that uh, we uh, that uh, we were allowed to do thanks to the evolution of the pandemic we wanted to celebrate with LACNOC and LACNEG um, this event closer to a community, maintaining the virtual format of our last three events uh, and also adding the in-person possibility at the Uruguayan Technological Laboratory. That's where we are today. And in the hub in Pergamino in the province of Buenos Aires in Argentina, where we also have a large group of participants. Throughout this week, you'll be able to participate in different uh, tutorials, technical participations of LACNOG and panels of uh, like the uh, uh, daily life of an operator, the ROA contest, uh, public policy forum, the interview with Vin Cerf, that's our next event, and many others that uh, hopefully will be of interest to you. I want to reinforce the call of so many years so that the organizations in the region may accelerate the deployment of IPv6 in their networks so as to ensure the growth of the internet. Some data that are relevant throughout these years, we have assigned 188 million addresses. This has enabled to have 400 million users. However, there are still 240 million users to connect, and we only have 1 million addresses available. That is, IPv4 addresses were depleted already last year. Definitely, 
no more. That's why we insist on the deployment of IPv6 to ensure that uh, these 204 million people may participate of the opportunities provided by the digital era. Uh, these events, uh, as uh, LACNIC 36, LACNOC 2021, maintain the spirit of generating a space uh, of uh, uh, exchange and encounter with the different stakeholders in the ecosystem so as to maintain the operational model of the internet that distinguishes us. I'd like to invite you to get involved and to participate of the different uh, spaces that uh, such as the Impro Show, that is our social event, where we are going to go through improvisation dynamics. And as Andrea said, we invite you to join us in um, the discussions in the social media and the platforms such as the uh, chat, the Discord calls, and others. So let me close by thanking Lacnaga for their support uh, to be able to organize this event jointly and the sponsors that made it possible for us to uh, organize this and the authorities, but especially a very, very special acknowledgement in the name of all the board of LACNIC to the staff. The staff that always works so hard and year after year they do better and better despite the technical problems, the logistic problems uh, worsened because of the pandemic. And thanks to them, we are enjoying this event. Uh, they're already working for the next one. They never uh, we are always surprised with them, um, uh, and we are very pleased for that. And so, without further ado, we welcome you to LACNIC 36, LACNOC 2021. Thank you, Javier, for your words. Now, we will uh, introduce uh, Ariel uh, uh, Weher, the president of the board of LACNOGO, who will be with us from the hub in Pergamino in Argentina. For the first time, we have a hub to have more networking spaces and more interaction between the members of the internet community. Today, we are doing it in uh, Pergamino, Argentina. Ariel, are you there? Hello, good morning. Hopefully, you can hear me well. Well, thank you. I want to thank all the attendees. Thank you. Thanks uh, to all uh, who are watching us from TV or live or in person or uh, remotely through Zoom. This is a challenge, doing this in two different sites. Let's see how it uh, comes so well. First of all, I hope you're doing well and that you have uh, um, uh, gone through the pandemic uh, well. And I just want to tell you that this is a new format that we are now inaugurating about a year ago we were celebrating the 10th anniversary of LACNOG online. So when uh, we think that uh, the celebrate, when we thought that the celebration of the t that 10th anniversary would be in person, we couldn't. And now we are having a hybrid version where we have local uh, uh, attendees from Argentina to come and to meet as we used to do at the LACNIC and LACNOC events. First of all, and in the name of uh, all uh, the board of LACNOC, I want to thank the board of LACNIC, Javier, who's there, and the entire board. Here we have a representative that is Esteban Lescano. Thank you for supporting us and for helping us organize this event, but especially for helping us uh, uh, to put this hub together a lot. LACNIC works every day. You know that we work uh, daily with uh, clear objectives, and we reaffirm our commitment trying to provide uh, a more open, a secure, and stable internet. And as usual, I want to invite you to enjoy to enjoy it and to make the most of uh, the content that we have organized. Uh, talk, collaborate, do business. As usual, we have the usual communication means. So we have Discord, uh, the mailing list. Uh, it's very, very important for us uh, to uh, make the most of the event. You're going to find a lot of very interesting discussions. The uh, mailing list uh, of LACNAG today has uh, more than 1,200 uh, uh, 
um, uh, subscribers, and uh, we hope that you will write uh, down your ideas there. I also want to thank the programs committee in the hands of Jorge Villa, who put together the agenda for the event. So, Jorge and the entire programs committee, I thank you uh, a lot because you put together a very interesting agenda. We're going to have very good in uh, uh, discussions with a lot of innovation. So, thank you again for your uh, perfect job. Finally, the entire staff of LACNIC, they're always, uh, they always, uh, they're always supporting us, guided by uh, um, Oscar Robles. They've been so useful, and we put together this hub very in a very short time, thanks to the collaboration of everybody here, the sponsors, the companies that made it possible for us to be broadcasting from here. Of course, I want to close by thanking the group uh, of volunteers and all the people that work for LACNAG and uh, all represented by our manager, Pia, Pia Solis, and some other people that I'm going to brief. Carmen Denis, Jenica Soberanis, Andrea Nachin, Mayra Hernandez, and Arturo Novello Denis, all of whom collaborate with LACNOG since the for the Center of Women in IT. So welcome everyone. Thank you for being with us. Thank you to those of you who are following us remotely. Enjoy the event. Thank you, Ariel, for your words. We'll now, as I said, have an interview with a special guest. I give the floor to Oscar Robles, the CEO of LACNIC, to begin the interview. Thank you. Before introducing the guest we have today, let me tell you that about 20 years ago, when the LACNIC community was looking to become accredited as the fourth regional internet registry, at the same time, it sought for a place to establish itself as an international organization, not only a space where there was an adequate legal framework, but also where the conditions were adequate for developing the technological activity for growing and stability, uncertainty, and all the rest. So 20 years later, today, in the midst of turbulent times from the economic and political standpoint in the region, we're now in Uruguay in a kind of oasis. This is because of the peace, the tranquility we have in all senses, and we see that there is an outlook for local development. So we are today with Omar Paganini, our guest today. He's a minister of industry, energy, and mining in Uruguay since the beginning of last year. Before taking the position of minister, he worked at the ministry, and he was the director of the business school of the Catholic University of Uruguay. Omar recently met with different technological high-level companies in the United States. And a few hours ago, he inaugurated the Uruguayan Pavilion at the Universe, Universal Exhibition. And we are uh, recently, Omar, we have seen reports on technological companies and the positive view they have of Uruguay, Google, Amazon. And the initial question is, what is the focus that Uruguay has with respect to technology and to the technological companies? Thank you, Oscar. Greetings to everyone. It is a pleasure to be here, and I'd like to thank the friends of LACNIC, whom we have known for many years now, for the invitation. Now, the question is a very timely question. In general, Uruguay has three conditions that somehow allow it to have a position next to the technology companies in a special way. The first is that we have 30 years of development of a technological exporting sector with penetration throughout Latin America, United States, and the rest of the world. 30 years over which the software export per capita is the highest in Latin America. We have thriving industries and a whole ecosystem which has attracted many foreign companies that have settled in the country. So on one hand, we have the technological capacity, and then we have the infrastructure. The infrastructure is, well, we have 
fiber optic to the 80% of the holes. We have undersea cable connecting us to the rest of the world. We have mobile telephony and uh, generalized use of the internet. So all these things lead to a second component that is quite relevant. And on the other hand, and, no, and this is no minor issue, we have the institutional aspects that you mentioned a while ago. This country has a background of compliance and honoring the contracts, institutional stability. In Uruguay, there have been changes in the administrations, but the rules of the game have maintained stable. stable. The three g political parties have had uh, the administration and exchanged over the past years, but in democratic context. So there are two types of interest in terms of technology, investment in infrastructure, and the development of stronger relations with the ecosystem. And we're most interested in the two. And this is what we're trying to do to position ourselves. The post-pandemic world provides an opportunity for special visibility, which we have to take advantage of. Now, why Uruguay? Why do these larger companies choose Uruguay to invest? Which of these factors that you mentioned would you highlight as one of the elements that are of the greatest relevance to attract such companies? Well, I think that it's a combination of all the factors. Having a powerful ecosystem somehow shows that we can be at the standard required, but also the, with the required institutionality. In Latin America, there is a lack of infrastructure, for example, data centers, which are the types of investments in infrastructure that might not have been so interesting in terms of employment, but this generates investment. It generates the potential to establish data centers in the region. Everyone speaks about the requirement in this sense. And then we are well positioned because of the institutional framework we have and because of the infrastructure to attract development centers, to attract the opportunity to for companies to settle here. We really have an adequate ecosystem. So depending on what these companies, these giants are looking for, we can offer these things. But you really have the experience in LACNIC. This is not about vertically integrated companies, but this is about ecosystems. The anchor companies can be the drivers, but then locally it is necessary, and this can even be enhanced. Now, the post-pandemic times have deepened some things, and not only in Uruguay, but in the region, we really have to take advantage of these times. Well, we mentioned the larger companies, not because these are the only relevant ones in this ecosystem, but also, as you mentioned, these are entities to which a lot of attention is given because they make long-term investments and they just don't go blindly into these situations. And it was, it's quite inevitable to speak about the pandemic. Precisely in the region, there are three of the five most affected countries because of the number of cases during the pandemic not only in terms of cases but also in terms of the number of deaths for example mexico brazil peru is also one of these countries countries with low levels of vaccination in mexico and in peru specifically and other with other problems. But Uruguay really has stood out because of how it managed the pandemic and also because of the transformations that took place regarding technologies. How does this situation find Uruguay and what is Uruguay's position with a view to the future? Fortunately, it is a blessing that Uruguay managed to rapidly react to the pandemic. The current administration had established its had taken office in the first of March, and a week later, the pandemic broke out. But the strategy adopted by the country was to rapidly close the borders, but not to stop the internal movement. 
we did not have lockdown. And at the same time, there was an awareness of the population. And this worked well at the beginning. There was a strong drop in the activity. So during 2020, the pandemic did not affect us. It did affect the rest of the region, unfortunately. There was an infrastructure which was used to develop things. This came from before. Uruguay, we have continuity. And this is something that we have to highlight. Administrations have changed, but things continue. We were first digitalized telephony network in the 90s. Then we went through the development of fiber optic to the home in the 2000s. And then an integrated health platform. This was digitally. We developed an app. App, sorry. This was a tool for registering and reporting potential contacts. And then we also use the APIs of Google and others to detect proximity cases. So all these things were implemented in the midst of a pandemic. And in 2021, when in fact the Delta variant arrived, which he corrects himself, the P1 variant, which strongly affected us, we are already starting with vaccination. This allowed us over these months, which were, those months which were very hard months, to restrict it because this was done thanks to the unified agenda for the entire country with the digital support, with an automatic registration system for vaccination. And at the same time, this showed that we had a mature health system to solve problems supported by a digital infrastructure. So all these things leads to the fact that we are almost in the midst of a different reality. We're opening the borders as from November for those who have been vaccinated with everyone taking care and precautions, but a very high vaccination rate. So the exit of the pandemic that we are witnessing in some parts of the world. There are places where things are evolving better, but I think we are overcoming the pandemic at a faster rate than expected. There will, all, there will always be a coronavirus situation in some parts that will be endemic. We all have to pay attention to this, but we are in the midst of an opening. And this is thanks to the environment and to technology, which are the things that we have to focus on the future. In the post-pandemic future, or regarding those strategies that the countries have to implement to take advantage of the energy we'll have following this, lock, this period of um, being closed up, well, Uruguay is trying to position itself in the world in the best way possible, both in digital, uh, in the digital area, but also regarding renewable energy sources. Uruguay is also an attractive country to live in this post-pandemic world. Remote working, working from the home was rapidly adopted. So a lifestyle that somehow, because of the size of the country and the size of the cities is really exceptional because we don't have the mega cities that you have in other countries of the region that have the difficulties that we are all aware of. You can work from Uruguay with a more relaxed lifestyle, but connected to the rest of the world. So we can attract talent. We can also attract investments and can try to open the markets as far as possible to become diversified. And it is in that sense that we are focusing on the commercial area, which is food production. At the same time, we wish to attract technological companies and the development of the audiovisual industry. The pandemic has allowed us to be quite successful in this area. Video games and the world that we wish to be present in. So for all the neighboring countries, this also provides an opportunity to become associated and to find companies that work in clusters. And I think that is what we'll be seeing in the coming years. We also see that there is an opening, maybe not from the legislative standpoint, but that the government is open to new technologies. Recently, there was an event on blockchain here in Uruguay, although there is no legal framework yet to regulate this, ultimately, you are really open to understanding those topics. 
have you foreseen any position in that regard? Yes, there is a working group that is working in Parliament and also a bill. There's an initial version. And then it would, in dialogue with the industry, we're trying to improve this. This is uh, presented by the Partido Nacional and in dialogue with the coalition. So hopefully in the coming months, we'll have a bill that will be approved in Parliament. Thank you, Omar. As a foreigner living in Uruguay, I can really witness the peace and tranquility that you really breathe here. So maybe the Kilan Mezcal will also be in Uruguay one day. So thank you, Omar. It is a pleasure to have you here. You have been present in some of our events, and it's always a pleasure to have you with us. And we can support the ministry in whatever you need when this then becomes relevant. Thank you, Oscar.